Oh, yeah. Thanks for coming to Office Hours. Uh, this is really random, but uh, I think we wanted to have a presence here. Um, and just so we uh, can introduce ourselves, if you're a part of HDC and kind of see us out of see each other in person. But also, if you're not at HDC, just to kind of know what our organization is. Uh, and it's, it's uh, I'm pretty far away from uh, how many years, let's see? Six. And yeah, it's really our favorite by by we see as the court would be no, big no, dead no, yeah. So yeah. Um, but yeah, I like we just in typical fashion we have the scriptures in all our I think at all the Zoom meetings there is usually an icebreaker. Um, but yeah, we we'll, um, just to go back. We're kind of like the three years of. Uh, New York City organizations and individuals who collaborate on getting housing data up the phone and uh, using the housing data for for different pops. Yeah, and yeah, we we, we have come up in meetings that with that we kind of close um that just talked about wait like, what how we're kind of directing that kind of energy over to sort of projects and uh, yeah our individual organizations that we're a part of that have has been like uh, really like benefiting from. Our collaboration between each other, so we yeah we will kind of spread that good joy over to the individual and other organizations. I think. Um, so we'll, I think let's go around the room with the icebreakers first, and then we can just have like a general discussion. And uh, yeah, anything you're interested in, I think you have thought about it. Yep. So yes, I'll start. Uh, I'm Z. Uh, I use he him pronouns. Uh, my favorite building in on NYC. Uh, I kind of just go with the the Queen's Library. That's actually well, wait, right by the the, the L I C branch, I think. But if that's a really weird way building this right by the the Ladies River, which is pretty cool. I know I can't building, but though it's like initially it was really leaky, but how it really like it, yeah. Um, it's just like it's it's, it's a sword zone. It's a better sword zone than the other New York City buildings because it's like a public space. Uh, and what brought me to this, or what roles that I have in HCC, uh, I'm uh, part of AMIC, which is uh, one of the organizations that helps kind of maintain uh, one of the data sets that they can in the HCC I community. But uh, as an individual, I would look to know, know more about how I can use some of the data to kind of uh, do uh, interesting uh, tenant action in the class of. Yeah. I'm a fellow to the master. Uh, sure. Yep. Uh, my name is Maxwell. I uh, was suit them. Um, I put a member of that doesn't do questions. It started uh, just as an individual event within the last year. I found uh, a nonprofit called Justice, which means a uh, cool start. Uh, the Zen book met building off of a lot of the data that um, we will be talking about that, that HD Siege found, um, like collects and puts together in a, in a format, um, like one of the, the big projects that. Um, the, the whole issue started around, but like it used to maintain, you should like pulling uh, various data sets from across open data, as well as like other open source projects where we get scraping data, things like that. Um, um, and it's like a pipe of program that pulls all those together, cleans them, standardizes them, and puts them into a, a SQL database that allows you to put, do uh, analysis of linking all these tables when the agency is in its source, so as well as to like make. Uh, apps and visualization to all that kind of stuff on top of it. We have some to the like make available to members. Um, uh, no, yeah, so but, yeah, I'm using that a lot. Uh, I've done that work for a uh, call to one spot. But here, uh, I've made words in the room with the building as well with all the other buildings that you're, you're leaning word on. So it's all really possible, but the, uh, the, uh, the like, they were uh, uh, HCC members to put all that together. Uh, along and yes, I just wanted to come to send a link share more about BTC into questions. I'm to post like on what uh, we're interested in and then how and like at Vault and the Revolution and uh and kind of like squirt the project segment was interested in. Um kind of I'm probably lacking on a favorite building at the moment. Um yeah, I'm gonna shoot it. Uh hi, I'm Lucy and I use she care pronouns. Um I've been in kind of BHC seasons, yeah, from the beginning, it was January 2017. Um, I also work at the Association for Neighborhood and Public Development, the HANHD, and I manage our Dispense Overlook project, which we'll call that portal. 
um, which you can type in that just still have the permission for your building where you can look up uh, LDs that hires up to policemen with a lot of different like, indicators. Um, and yeah, all the work I've done at my organization has been really closely tied to the work of the Housing Data Coalition and like the collaborations in the space with organizations like Justfix and Beta NYC and others has been um, just like completely um, necessary, like the knowledge sharing and help. And like personally, I develop technical skills with the support of other people in the space that I like absolutely didn't have. Because when I started with HGC, I only knew Excel. Um, and I like, worked like R and SQL and some other stuff. Um, so it just really helped me grow up, especially also. Um, and yeah, I think I'll take a second, like HGC is a wonderful space and community. You can most separate through like our meetings and our Slack space. Um, but I'll just plug uh, our kind of need for people to get involved and plug into like these working groups that we have, which uh, kind of co formulate around long-term work, but are recently taking more shape. So I have been quite on an operations working group to just make sure we can like run everything. Maxwell's point on a tech working group, which uh, were some things like maintaining NYCDB, running hackathons, uh, fielding or like technical support requests through help desk. We also have a partnerships working group. Uh, this goal is to really like build our organizational relationships with on the ground groups, the organizers, and tenant led groups, uh, so we can make sure that our work is guided by needs on ground. Um, so those are the kinds of things that we are hoping for more people to get involved with. And I also want to create building in life. Um, there, but there is one that's on the FDR drive and, uh, I grew up in Stuyvesant town and my parents would drive me like down the FDR and there's this building in like, um, two bridges that's around that FDR. It has this really cool, like these two like round kind of. I don't know how to describe how it's shaped, but it's just like a really pretty shape, and I always imagine living there, but I don't. <laughs> well, I'm Julie Kalin Shearer for Heavens. Uh, I have not felt my program like HCC before today, but I just into to work about it. Um, yeah, to look in the world right now. Uh, and I feel it's also really hard, but like my first answer that came to mind was like Orphan Public Library and do like funny art and stuff. Uh, Hey guys, my name is Gurdjieff, uh, uh, Peter, uh, my favorite building is probably my apartment building. Uh, I really enjoy this. Uh, the reason I came here, so I'm at the private sector, most of the time is there. Um, but I also spend a lot of time uh, as a part of community centers and various not confidence. Um, so I mostly came here to just see. One thing that for the on and I liked was that all oh, it just is this sort of um, I just have to go one private and public spaces. Uh, but it's also just a blur. I definitely like about what you guys were and what you guys do. Uh, because I've been talking to a bunch of guys also in the private sector, uh, specifically tight, where uh, uh, there is a lot of opportunity for us down in our spare time to contribute back to the public and profit uh, spare. Um, so, yeah, I'm interested in how you guys work uh, to manage to also housing and is a big issue in the other wall, yeah, the community centers that they want to add help. So that's a big part. Uh, and I think in general, the conference is really good. Uh, exposed me to what data is available on um, tech. So I can want to make a use of the one from, with a lot of good data. Uh, yeah, that's pretty thing. Uh, hi folks, I'm Kami um, pronouns sheepers and favorite bully in New York is also Wada for a village because it's like a short, two of the shorter buildings in Queens, and there's privately an unobstructed view of Manhattan at the top. Um, I'm kind of also like, oh, bring chocolate about force. Oh, because it's also kind of big, kind of. but I'm not in Kitsil and Bully, and up some cake. Um, I don't have a role in HTC, but I used to work for a legal tech and profit that like cross paths with just fits quite a bit. Um, so I've always been like aware of the work that's because done. I was just curious, you know, how the space has grown. So eager to one more. Thank you, Katie. 
I, I'm telling you, he is. Chamber building in New York City. I'm going to follow the theme with libraries, but mine has to be the Central Humanities Research Library. Yeah, I spent quite a bit of time there, my first time in grad school. Holy science with like that. What brought me to this conference and what's my role? So I am the internal evaluator at Bronxworks for the Eviction Prevention Access to Benefits programs. Uh, I'm also an external evaluator with my own LLC, but I focus more on international development and food systems there. So I'm basically a program evaluator by training how I use data. Uh, I'm not a Python person, I'm more of an R person, that's why I live in my stats and I believe the second time around. But that's how I use the data. So I, I've been um, housing, eviction prevention, but I also talk with other, other evaluators in the rest of the country where housing is an issue either specific for evacuation in some situations or for people coming out of recovery or in general in some other urban areas where they're not as fortunate as New York City. I have open data. They're looking to collect data mm -hmm. and try to have a, see their base level of where they are. Is she? Hi, I'm Jesse, and I'll she her pronouns. Uh, my favorite building, the first thing that came to mind is um, the Hearst Tower mm -hmm. on the 57th and 8th. Like, it's actually right across the street from my office, so I like look at it every single day. And I just love how it's like this building it started like a century ago and then got stopped due to the great depression and then finally had this like glass tower plopped on top of it and it's like so weird looking but an interesting story as well um and i don't have a role in hdc i uh housing is a really top issue for me and i'm uh, a member and on the board of open new work and so kind of wanted to come here to see like i i know a lot about um like just fix and who owns what and uh, have used them for myself as well as like tools with advocacy and then just wanted to learn more about uh, what you all are doing. I'm Pat, my name is Marina. I use she, her friends. I also work at Postworks, uh, but more out the ground, I work in supportive housing as a social worker. So I been working directly with tenants in a very like specific niche kind of housing where they've had a history of homelessness and now have permanent housing, uh, but they're lacking a lot of these like knowledge about advocacy efforts, I think, and resources. And I've used Just Fix before, and I've heard of like some of the other tools, but I'm looking for more information about like how to bring in to the people that I work with, did what I can do with like the on the ground publish that I have to get more involved. Uh, my favorite building, I live in Harlem, so I'll say like the Scribers Row. Oxidus, okay. those are really beautiful. They all have my goals in the pot. Big C and Fort Gross. Uh, I'd say my favorite building, other than Prom Heights, I like the farm they're building. Come on. And these will be a tendency. Uh, I, didn't do, I didn't know what HTC was before today, uh, but I looked it up in preparation position and realized that his just to support um, one of the basement and flooding. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so this is my first character. Hey, I'm Jonah. I use he, him. Um, I don't know if I have a favorite building, but I'm kind of currently being haunted by the news for tall and downtown Brooklyn. But I kind of like see it everywhere I go. <laughs> it's hard to do it. The skinny one or the large? The skinny one. And, it's <laughs> and yeah, it looks like I'm in Lord of the Rings. Um, but the um, property this time, uh, I'm a graduate student studying applied mathematics. In fact, I'm going to apply mathematics to the housing and transportation issues and equity. Um, but before COVID, uh, I was living in DC and I worked with the uh, Stophouse Slumlords group there. I was doing like dev work or uh, analyzing uh, citywide eviction data to basically find landlords that uh, were good targets to do tenant organizing. Um, yeah, but I don't have any role in HTC, but I'm interested in what the work is all about. My name is Christopher, uh, pronounce he or they, and uh, my favorite building in New York City, I'm absolutely with Chicago, and I uh, came in Philly this morning on two hours of sleep, so my favorite building is my friend's apartment. I'm going to be saying to it. Um, and uh, what brought me here, uh, I, I, how I came from like the you know, non-profit uh, political spaces and did 
activism uh, and the advocacy work around affordable housing and homelessness uh, but more recently have been uh, pivoted to the tech space and uh, focusing currently in a graduate program on homelessness data. Uh, but very interested in obvious, the very uh, obvious intersection uh, with the word that uh, we're going here at HTC. Hi, my name is Nathan Story. He, yep. um, I'm going to go with my favorite, least favorite building in New York City currently is uh, at 260 11th Avenue. Um, the current form of current offices that works for the Department of Homeless Services, uh, Street Homeless Solutions Division. Um, we work with Browns Works. Uh, but this building, uh, used to be the Bodice Elevator Building, and it's my least favorite building because the heat, uh, doesn't work <laughs> in where my, uh, my, uh, desk is, but it's my favorite building because I used uh, who owns what to look it up and find out some information to make key complaints. Um, but also, it just has really put a lot of buildings in New York City. It's really interesting. It was the pet quarters of the Otis Elevator Company when they were building an elevator school board building and the Empire State Building. But then later in the 60s, it was a famous club where Patty LaBelle sang. And then more recently, it was a Chicken Dale Club. All of that was happening where my desk currently <laughs> sits. <laughs> so, <laughs> feeling really. Uh, depressed or overwhelmed about the state of homelessness in New York City. I like to think about some great parties that happened during where I was sitting. <laughs> so that, that's my building. I'll, I don't have to roll with the HCC, although I've been on the Slack for a long time and I've met a few people here. Um, sometimes I, I lurk in here. I should probably be a little bit more involved. I'd like to talk to um, HTC a little bit just about some of I've worked for Department of Homeless Services for about seven years now. Some of my knowledge, I'd like to find um, some informal ways to share a little. Uh, I work on data and, and um, software development. Yes, thank you all for sharing. Uh, I didn't need... Let's go through a few, a few slides of not the uh, work. Wait, I didn't know you were about to say KVHD on lab also stuff, and then there's the uh, large NYCD media. Uh, I just pulled some old slides from the perfect page that you've done, typically. Uh, but does the highway like what HTC have kind of their third of the group? Um, we kind of create a space with help the time we advocates and data policy folks to kind of engage and come together and work collaboratively, uh, share kind of SQL queries, share where data sets are. We can't find those. Uh, so our Slack is like number one place to be. Uh, even though you're working, I think you can just look, like, scroll up and if the messages aren't archived, then you can probably follow with a wealth of information on what's going on. Uh, we also post uh, monthly meetings uh, that are semi-open to the public. Uh, yeah, last week, well, last week, because, sorry, last week's meeting was pretty awesome. There was a talk about under dash doors that I think the, um, yeah, yeah, but the Municipal Art Society was, uh, was presenting on a new portal. They were, they were, they were developing to showcase the, the uh, couple of uh, policies related to um, environmental review. Uh, so that, that was pretty cool. Um, and then also there's other meetings. Uh, and in the meetings, we also talked about like how we kind of can uh, navigate through this tech space and use data for kind of advocacy work. We also have the working group uh, meetings um, that uh, we was talking about. So uh, we're looking for folks that help us kind of steer the organization uh, with different types. Um, and yeah, I'm um, just going to skip forward to MYC meeting just to keep this presentation short that we can kind of have a really general discussion. So, our New York City database is kind of like this huge like database where we kind of extract all the public data that is accessible through the open data portal, but also through uh, different dashboards that the DOB has, the DOB, uh, uh, finance, Department of Finance has, it's, it's a couple of public departments that we pull data from. And then we kind of extract that data. So like, I think most useful data that I find from that is that the Department of uh, Finance's uh, tax uh, bills, right? And then from there, you can pull like different rent civilization stuff. Um, and this is just fixed by the run the script. So we kind of have like, uh, like I guess, a huge database where we can all share this data. So once that order, uh, once our scripts kind of finish running, we can all our respective organizations and individuals can pull that data find out how many rent stabilized units are in a specific building, what type of rent stabilized like, units they are, if they're decreasing and increasing. I've recently kind of story with the city showing um, 
join the, the ability to have that renewed data rate deportation. So really interesting data. There's uh, just really simple stuff that, that, that it's automated, but uh, we would love to know to prove in the database. So there's a ton of scripts. Um, actually, I failed to mention the GitHub, but all, all the scripts that, uh, that we kind of use are generally public. But um, you just have access to that, but the database, you have to kind of plan an agreement before you can access the database itself. Um, but yeah, just going through, yeah, oh, we, there's a ton of other data that you can pull um, and that we kind of fix. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, these are really old slides are just fixed it, but if you want to just go ahead and leave them. Yeah, sure. And yeah. I mentioned this. So, uh, I mentioned a little bit about, um, so as we were saying, it's like, I think they both kind of a mix of just like individuals as well as um, folks from some like nonprofits that uh, used to do it. Um, so, Swap is one of the sites that I uh, was mentioning. So, it's a, it's a tool that's kind of like built by almost entirely off of the NYCDB database that um, the, the coalition uh, built and we at adjusters like kind of uh, help maintain as well in terms of like creating kind of like auto updated version of it. So it's constantly pulling on all the different schedules, uh, the data sets and updating them into this database so that um, we have this uh, like web app um, that allows you to like, look up your address, um, get a kind of like curated um, list of information about the uh, the building, um, as well as we like take all of the data from those open data sets, um, primarily uh, the city housing park, HPD's um, registration records for uh, for like park buildings, and um, so the, the kind of like issue that folks have a lot is that like almost like a lot of these uh, residential buildings are going to be owned technically by like a LLC uh, corporation, like shell company that set up the justice facility for that building, and so there's like not much information that you can get about. Um, we are actual landlord is within the HPT registration data, which are open data sets on the city portal. They have a lot more information about the contacts of uh, who the actual owner is often, um, or the like uh, the manager or like the site. There's a bunch of different contacts, and uh, we're able to uh, take that data, do a lot of matching between all of those contacts based on their business addresses to try to find um, like who are actually all the people behind some of these companies and then be able to kind of like create that network um, of what are all the buildings that are related that and like we own know by the same landlord. I guess it's really helpful for lots of use cases that are well, it's, uh, excitingly uh, for years that uh, it allows you to kind of like organize across buildings. So um, usually you're like fighting to, to get repairs or uh, to fight back against like rent increases at a building, organizing with your neighbors, creating like a tenants association. Um, and that's, that's great all of the, the, the single building level, but if you want to start kind of like building even more power, it to like spread up to all of the other buildings uh, that are owned by that same way where it kind of like increase that, the, the power when you're kind of like linking back against us, that with a French strike in one building is, uh, you know, it's going to be way more powerful to be able to do that across multiple buildings in the portfolio. Um, and so this allows you to figure out where, uh, those other buildings are. Um, and so it's, but it's also used by lots of other groups. Um, folks like in the legal aid uh, area have also find a lot of this information useful for developing uh, cases in uh, like fighting back against evictions or, or for repairs. Um, it's also used by lots of uh, like journalists. And, um, you know, anytime there's like a, a new building in like a new story or something, like you can uh, quickly look it up here and, and often find out a ton of information. Um, but then there was a, the like um, tragic uh, fire, I think it was like last year. A lot of people like the police jumped off once one and saw where we'll find out who it was that was uh, behind that building. So uh, that uh, the mayor's team called us up for just like a lot of great information that is up there. Technically, on a data for a public, we make more accessible uh, for all these different sorts of purposes. Um, yeah, it allows for all sorts of other things that you can uh, kind of just get like a much better picture of, of the file. Landlord's behavior across all of their different buildings and kind of see those patterns emerge. One of the projects that we have done about a couple of years now is uh, this worst to victors list of like taking all the data that we've developed for the portfolios of the landlord and then mashing it with uh, eviction data from, from different sources to be able to get a sense of uh, for the landlords that are uh, evicting uh, the most tenants, um, things like that. Um, it also just like makes the data available for. All sorts of other kind of like one-off uh, research work that uh, coalition members are doing uh, by putting it all together in one place. You can do the kind of like across uh, and do this kind of analysis. Um, we do a lot of adjustments as well as with an HTC like uh, request for uh, very different data from our more kind of uh, book students kind of work. 
Um, yeah, a lot of what is uh, what like helps us to kind of standardize things and put it all together in one place. And in addition to all of the uh, the data that's like from agencies on the portal, we're also able to like supplement with the stuff that's that's found on there. So as you was mentioning, some of the um, red stable as even chemists uh, just fix it. Other folks uh, prior to kind of source security have been scraping those off of PDFs from the for finance or um, doing kind of like additional work to like clean and make uh, uh, more useful some of the like Marshall's evictions data, uh, things like that um, over the last end of years. Uh, the three of us have as other members of the, the coalition have been working to uh, get data from the state agencies that oversee the housing court system as this data that like was not you made it up for you that will uh, prior it. Uh, we're able to get access to it and then in turn release it to the public to be able to use um allows such much greater understanding of what's happening to support it's especially um network to COVID to be able to, to monitor means care more about like some of the, the dashboards and stuff that we're able to put together so um that can you shut up I'll go through really quickly. Um, so it probably doesn't have no formal on it. I've been sitting there. I think it does actually. Oh, okay, yeah. cool. Um, yeah, just so we can get to like discussion questions. Um, we're creating HD, we're a membership organization of other citywide nonprofits. Uh, we do a lot of work in the housing space, along with other policy work and organizing advocacy. Um, so this place on our project, this is like the historic bolts we've been pilot, but basically it's data tools to help identify buildings where tenants added and other residents of the area city are at heightened risk of displacement. So we've used a lot of these different data sets that are available through open data over the years, so we can combine them in different ways to help identify enough that is um thought through quite a few iterations of the most recent staff portal, which looks different than that. That's kind of like the V1 of it. Uh, and if that's the fold, um, you can see like all of the details for individual properties. So the kind of like tables of data that you would be able to get if you went on the open data portal and then filter for a single for a lot plot code for one property. We got to pull that all together on one page. You can type in your address and get all that historical records for a bunch of different data sets. And other challenges. Uh, yeah, so I don't know if about that much. I think like, yeah, <laughs> no, we talked about each other in the show. We'll sh sh show the portal uh, a bit more later. Uh, but yeah, our, this is these are ways you can reach out, especially uh, reaching out to uh, us in Slack. So if you go to uh, housingdata.nyc.org, you can get, join our Slack and uh, later on uh, join our meetings. Uh, if you're interested, our monthly meetings are pretty interesting again. Uh, yeah, that's mostly it. We could talk, uh, we could show the, the portal, we could show the data if you're interested. Uh, yeah. Do we have a link to the Slack of our website? Mm -hmm. Oh wait, so I feel like the best way if you want to join after this is to send an email to the email address. Then we can meet at the general meetings, which are every third Wednesday of the month from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. on Zoom. Harry, what a question. Oh, no, oh I, I was going to ask if you could, are you able to share more about like working groups that you have, that you had mentioned? Uh, or is that something that, like yeah. I should get involved to learn more? Well, I mean, what do you, anything in particular that you're interested in? Um, I guess I would maybe like benefit from having like a menu of options to know. Um, yeah. like, I mean, I'm like, I am like particularly interested in, um, in like rent stabilization data and, and like one of the things that you mentioned was like rent stabilization accounts, like in buildings and like destabilization <laughs> and, and things like that and um I don't know much about what data is already publicly available but it's like I like want to work more out and I'd also just be interested in learning out like what else it is that you have going on right now yeah so yeah I feel like we can talk uh a little bit about what each of the working groups is working on and then I would say that like the what you're bringing up is understanding uh one of the many data sets that we work with on a regular basis and so one place is really Helpful than that is the Slack where there are a lot of people kind of floating around who work with that data for a long time. Mm -hmm. But, like, uh, a great example of a question that you'd be able to get probably some quick answers all of them trying to like decipher and figure it out. We do have some documentation, it's not perfectly complete, but okay. there's a lot of work into trying to make it better. Um, uh, but there's some like resources I'm using with different data sets that are in NYCDB. 
But I can share what operations was working on, and then we could share like tech and archetypes to me. But yeah, I can find out yeah. it. Um, so operations is basically just like making the running of HTC uh, sustainable. We are uh, a sense of, I mean, it's an unfunded space. So it's a gathering of both kind of representatives of nonprofit organizations, which I am the Maxwell Venom made this for a long time. He was just tech funding of his own volition. Um, but without like having it actually funded and be part of our dot descriptions very much to be there. Uh, and then a lot of volunteers and people are interested in the work and people come coming in and out. And so it's just kind of, we've been already for six years now. There's some of us that have been around for basically that entire time. We've kind of have been like holding the knowledge of where is stuff and how we've been doing this stuff, like the institutional knowledge. And it's just like really overdue for us to, um, that, like, not potify it, but like put it in a place that's accessible for everybody and be like, Here's all of our information, here are systems, just structures, how we make it work. Like it's not that complicated. We have like a Slack and an email list and some kind of monthly Zoom. Um, and so operations are really just trying to make that stuff like smoother so that um, HTC is a functional space, but also an equitable one where there are just like a few people who are kind of holding all of that information and then having this like unintentional power over the way that things work. So we want to be like more kind of open and transparent that way. The, the tech working groups, again, these are all like newly established, but like, I don't know, is this just like great mine or what formalizing work that has already been going on. So um, I'm from the next bit. Third, we're working on a number of things, one of which is kind of like helping to forge and like build the community of community cares of the NYCDB tool and Zalem um, and that like read this from uh, like helping folks get started with being able to read to that uh, code base um, in terms of like writing the code to add the new data set or something like that but it is also um, uh, today that just saying we've got a lot of documentation that kind of like supplements the official documentation that's out there for the like public data sets on the data world is that fact um, with like a lot more like ones of what you would actually use the data for and like as people are like working with this data and learn more about it, you can kind of contribute back to that uh, documentation. So that the, the, those sorts of efforts are very things that are going on as well as um, mm -hmm. uh, we kind of like make available or ourselves to answer questions on on this kind of data to um, folks that are in like aligned with the, the values of HTC, so like that organizers and, and, and advocates um, Want to like get answers for data set or like have a project in mind and they need some help with it. So um, you might get a gush of like or a creep to um, uh, look into like a very specific sort of thing and they're not sure if it's covered in one of these data sets. So like looking into the, uh, the housing board data that they have, which is like public and accessible, but not everyone will be able to like make sets of. And so we're able to kind of like help bridge that gap a little bit from. The, the technical knowledge that we have for like how to work with the data with the like on the ground experience of folks that are using this and like how to try to figure out those ways to uh, uh, to make that more useful to open. So uh, I do some that work as well as um, like COVID to kind of like to reorient the um, the like open data uh, space. So I've been working with like a few data sets so that we had and like undertake as members so we get the agencies to publish as well as like folks that the making the free and with the information uh, request to the agency to get some data sets and wanting to try to like help build some infrastructure around that to be able to do that uh, in a more fun way consistent way to then share those like how to go the as well and make that available uh, uh, as well as just like a space for kind of like collaboration of the different projects so a lot of how uh, the coalition started and ambition of this database is kind of like a meetup up space um, for folks that are kind of like already doing a lot of this work at, um, uh, in those early days, it's um, for the, the great space of this site, like, come together the all these people work to be very simple things. And I come to play to kind of like, uh, uh, to a one that were common of like, I was trying to make like a full use of the data, but the first thing I can do was like, we need to get it all standardized and I'm going to take one of your tax up where we'll do that all together, um, with the NYC to be thick and brings everything else or available. So there's like other projects like that, that pulls me to the village. That want to come and like find spaces to, to collaborate, get feedback, or like find out uh, those to, to kind of work with on that. So hopefully that will like continue to start and then um, like rebuilding a little bit of that part of the coalition as well with the older group. Uh, and all the 
in depth, but I just think it's like a cool story about how NYCDB came to be because uh, it was literally like, let's, a bunch of people are working on housing data projects and spending so much time doing things like what Z showed a while ago, where like understanding that DOB permits doesn't have a single BBL that's formatted the same way as other city data sets. And so you have to like concatenate it and pad it the zeros and just like decipher all of it. So we would take, you know, any person who wanted to do a housing data project in New York City, spent like months just getting up to speed with competing the data sets and working them and like getting the lay of the land. And it was just one guy, Ziggy, who had worked on a few, like he's a, a developer for a nonprofit, but had been doing a few like kind of pro bono projects or volunteer projects. And he just created the, he wrote this Python script to be able to like pull in this stuff, even like at the beginning when a lot of stuff wasn't on open data, it was just like Excel spreadsheets on to permit find it for the side, like pulling it from those URLs. Um, so it's just to make it all like easier. And then the people who were getting Taylor was like, holy crap, like this is really <laughs> useful for all of us. And I, we didn't design a Taylor. It's just so useful that like JustFix then used it as the basis for Quorum Plot, which is now like an incredibly popular Cool, and it's still like this data infrastructure that helps all of these people coming into the space work from a common sort like source of truth or one centralized database. So I think it's like a really nice story of technology like actually facilitating work with a common purpose without it having without anybody really having planned it. And the uh, for partnerships our working group, it's really kind of put that data in action uh, and all the data analysis that comes out from that. Uh, because we really want to kind of have this data kind of affect policies that kind of put like permit change in, into our system. So like uh, the statewide, citywide rate council, that's something that we, we have been supported like over the years uh, through, through through RGC, this is uh, an organization called Rape Council, uh, that the name suggests. Um, and yeah, we, the, again, just taking that data, uh, figuring out what organizations that we can partner with, that we can work with, and that then elevate that data in a certain way. Um, so I currently it's mainly the right council, but we're looking to kind of extend it out to other organizations, be working with agencies that want to kind of do some outreach or uh, find government organizations that want to be like kind of tenant, tenant outreach and coordinate uh, organizing and fostering that relationship over time. So th they kind of have uh, projects for us, but we can also benefit by growing out our, our kind of outreach of like showing people okay, this is the data that you can add a piece. Um, well, yeah, I was curious, like, obviously, we're using MSC Open Data, um, but he also meant to look for the grants to you. Are there other ways in which you like send right data or kind of tailor do or go out and like collect data yourself on our thing? I was just uh thinking about this like grains was such a so we uh but we don't there are some members who have generated data that data has not gone into nicpd that doesn't mean it necessarily can't um but it like main rule what we have built with now our cdd full then existing sources out the world a lot of rules like come from the nyc open data api the full number are more i uh, people obscure and like have to be straight from Dion text bills. Um, but I was just in a session and then lightning pops about retool and I thought it was a really cool way out of out of them. Such like building out a simple thing like and bridge crowdsource data or like either generated data with open data sources, which is something like we have and done with NYCP, but it's a lot of think about that that we accomplished in that. And it's possible that there are other cases where like individual HDC members have done this with I'm not thinking about. Yeah. I mean, I have to please all the time for sorts of like one off projects and, and, and with advertising can you like their album. So but with the stuff with like on the making public or, or can for for whatever reason and so um but that a bit like having the MST there allows you to like look like hunt all all of that other information. So like the most kind of like common use cases that you might have. Uh, a list of addresses that you have from some other system might be like a list of all the like kind of association with uh, that you knew that they have with like a bunch of uh known targets for before like outreach organizing from from some other kind of uh purpose um i think something that like some of the members that are more about like google services realm might have like spine data that they want to like know more information about the buildings that they're in so there's lots of those cases where like 
cut that and that doesn't need to be shared publicly, obviously. But then you can like get those addresses and get them to like the, the, the tool link with the tax lot book and then really easily join it in with like everything else that you might want to know about the building, all kind of from one source because it's already what they do this take me. So like, you know, a bit of our demons a little bit stabilized zoom in, so the for uh like it's be any like code violations, building permits it like that might have taken you forever because like each one of those has a bit of a data set for the free can see maybe a script from some place. So um and so that's probably like the most common use that uh that I've seen or if you're personally into the uh to work with this data then I could find it with with another stuff. Um so it'll be other like little with us and that sort of thing. Um there hasn't been like a ton of that there's a little bit in certain other things so they're like they do this whole numbers and like what or for this on to like um they take orders on buildings it's just like uh, uh from like a particular source and that was an author portal and he'd be able to, to put it there share like the process of that quote or something he tells about the fourth like that so it will be more of that but a gentle like truly like power source data we, we have so but we did but i mean yeah easy can cut like add upon afterwards i just want to echo like that connecting with at this data uh, that, that I feel that that portal is really useful to to potent organizers who like don't necessarily know how to interface with like NYCDB, but they can type in that address of that portal and get all the information for like uh, all the marginal evictions there, all the HPD violations and everything. It's just all in one place and it's fairly easy. Um, and yeah, I really enjoy that about it. You can probably show it later. Yeah, but that that kind of makes the data more accessible. Out there, uh, previously I attended a previous session from the very planning folks, and which is sort of a back to back. And one of the things that's in the back of my head I kept on thinking was trying to create mathematically what the upper range would be, because this, the assumption of both what you're doing, what the community board is doing, is what's legal. And therefore, there's a permit, there's a process, there's a paperwork. I was wondering how, and I haven't really answered this, right? How would you use proxy data to sort of create a variance or try to kind of guess an estimate of an upper range of what you're not capturing in terms of units? Because they're illegal units, and therefore you're not, you don't have a paper trail. Good question. I mean, I don't know specifically if it, or the purposes of the code, you know, getting on like official or like a more representative count of like has a development or something like that, but. By uh, having such a wide range of all of these data sets from, from different places, it's been really helpful to be able to like pull little bits and pieces that it might that indicate something from a lot of different sources. So that they must want to find that a number of years ago I was working with um, like a tenant organizer who's well the like, legal service sister, but they were doing work trying to identify building a set um, where so like rent civilization um, applies to all buildings that were built before 1974 and have six or four units. Um, and what they were interested in are buildings that had fewer than six units and so words and for rent stabilization, but that had undergone legal conversions to add more demons, which actually like bumps you over the sticks. And then you could, you know, like make a legal case to that to even to become like de facto rent stabilized. And, um, so they were like specifically trying to like find buildings that are like re in this situation to go talk to both or get organized to, uh, and make those cases. And so that's something that's like. You know, you can't find really like legal versions of the, by the nature of it, but what you're able to do is like pull all sorts of information that might indicate that. So look at like, um, uh, construction permits as well as like, uh, violations and complaints that have been made across the different agencies that, um, indicate like unpermitted construction work going on or something like that. You know, might not always, um, actually lead to them like, uh, uh, enforcing that and kind of like, uh, getting rid of those units. So. There might have been like activity that you can find and kind of like piece together all sorts of um, different indicators to cover the likely case and then not to like go out uh, opportunities to do all that work. And so that's like one of the things that that, that would just be kind of like unfeasible to do. They were trying to deliver themselves by like looking up each building in different places, but by having it all together in um, Listen, like I was saying that they do, um, which also just then speaks to like what like part of what HEC is kind of like work in this that it's not just like tech folks, it's also people that have some of the on the ground knowledge, whether they're like actively members of HEC or just like working very closely with them and uh, and like their own organizations that kind of like connecting with them that way to like put together that real on the ground knowledge of like how this actually plays out in 
around the lives of tenants and, and or like from the HC perspective and like how the cell be put together so that the foot were then able to kind of like echo that with the bull of the data uh all as to like get us some of those of the fear that we I'll just add, add on facts on my best guess. Um, I think that like one of the most valuable things for me in the HPC space is just um, like the the breadth of knowledge and just like experience of working with these data sets. There's like I don't know, probably like twenty data sets or so that are in NYCDV at this point, and I'm super familiar with some of them and really not familiar with other ones. And so for like every single one of those data sets has generally a ton of value in what it can tell you and how you can quantify it. And like a lot of today is about building out tools to better access information that's in these very like sprawling data sets. But then when you have this community of people who are working with the data on an ongoing basis, people start to really understand what the data represent and the limitations of that. So like uh, HP violations is an incredibly rich source of data and it also is incredibly limited by our very disrupt called enforcement system around violations and weights and they're well involved in hdc who understand the whole life cycle of an hpd complaint and violation the issues with 311 the issues with building instructors uh not getting access to the building or like all the things that go wrong and so it's interesting to work with all this information where it is both really valuable and we know that there's tons of kind of like quality issues or just um idiosyncrasies that uh say something about what the information does or that would tell you i think it's like for me a big a major lesson around how we should interact with any data set but often don't have time to like if you're working with the fresh data set um, you might not know all of the context or like how it's produced and what goes wrong with how it's produced. But I think it's really like that having uh, a network of people who work with the same data you do and you can discuss it is super useful to be able to really like bridge the gap between the data and it actually being useful for world. Have a question about warm shifts? Let's follow that. The cap has to please. This analysis. Um, I'm curious about whether you did any work or not be through with the app on the board data. The thing. Um, because I feel like it was cool. I had worked with a guitar who was integrated. I am pretty the rare fakes in case of their deal rock and pulls and clusters. And on my experience, it's a bit 14 and so I'd love to treat the gear. Yeah. Come <laughs> So, uh, I think. Three years ago, we got access to the, the address level data, which is like the, the, uh, the how they were like filings for a specific address. But maybe uh, five years ago, we got access to the the, the, uh, the code level data. So uh, the Maxwell has been really, uh, Maxwell, we'll see how it's really part of for take off on uh, using that data set to kind of derive all the various table because with the data kind of like tech tables, right? Or like some up there. And then you kind of, and then those same tables can tell a story of like, uh, when the case gets piled, uh, does the, the, does the break to us, does the tenant show up to court, that is a tenant, uh, represented it. Uh, so, uh, there's all the nuance of bringing out the data set. It's very, I kind of interesting. And yeah, and to this manager to kind of put some action, uh, to that data. Um, so there's actually, uh, a vision dashboard that it, then you end up pacing it. Uh, there are no buddies to fix it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's this dashboard that kind of shows like all the various uh, active cases that are happening. Um, yeah, it's kind of broken, but uh, Mental will fix it. And then it also breaks it down with various other things that will pop, can help us lead into uh, uh, some certain analyses. So, uh, yeah, definitely uh, join our slide if we pick up like how to uh, uh, push the big catch. I will. In yeah. yeah, I had a question about Nell Marsh. It sounds like they have um, a lot of representation from different uh, organizations. I was wondering what's your first shift look like uh, and how, yeah, how your existing corn shifts work, how uh, other people contact you, uh, and sort of maybe life cycle with the challenges of maintaining how. Yeah. Yeah, so that's something we're kind of building out. Uh, 
Rob, he's the main uh, person leading the, the partnership working group. So we're trying to build up those relationships um, and trying to figure out like how we can uh, help to your wins and your fan processes. Um, but it can be any like capitalization and uh, organization, what data we can give you. And from there, uh, what you can also like help us uh, showcase that out of there. So absolutely the market with all ten of that to the ten and uh, sort of really the market issues. Yeah, so we have a uh, like yeah, that those are like the universe that we like partnered with and, and like don't uh, uh, work with like or profit it on folks that are allowed to like use the data. Um I thought it could have a sort of figures of like we've been like, I didn't be used like uh, for like coalitions or people, but have to see uh, the fur of Richard and Bastard. Uh, with us. Yeah, I think that uh, one of the main purposes of the HCC is to provide resources and capacity to um, groups that can benefit from housing, data, and tech adult have like the financial resources of the infrastructure that like uh, grassroots groups are not going to have like a uh, tech department um and so in a lot of ways HUC could function at like a bit of a tech back office to a lot of tenant groups and organizations and especially like under resourced ones um and we tried partner with QC led groups um or tenant led groups or unfunded groups uh and currently our had closest I, I know that the general working partnerships working group is um, we need to build for a like organizational relationship with the right to counsel coalition, but also in the housing court data work, it's kind of like a subset of HDC that the three of us are very actively involved in is that we're to like get a hold of the state housing court data and, and use it. Um, so it's a little bit of like an option of HDC and we, um, collaborate very closely with the right to counsel coalition, which basically like guides what we do with the data and making sure that it's used to try to um, get tenants representation and their emotion pieces and where possible support costs to stop unjust evictions. Um, so that's like a pretty uh, close partnership that's part of the HGC work. Um, what other uh, metro areas uh, have any have you connected with uh, similar groups, uh, other um, housing data coalitions, or groups working for advocating uh, justice around housing, specifically to gave us that for? Uh, so, uh, at the start of the pandemic, was probably when the people like, first started doing a lot of work. And so, we like to say that it was the first time we social Zoom and started kind of like. Uh, you know, to kind of like kind of organize work and all of this stuff that we like catalog actions with other uh, cities. There's a, a, a brief effort to kind of like have a kind of like national meeting of, of these sorts of groups um, that like ended up kind of like fizzling out a little bit as a past day, uh, which really remember, but there are a lot of other boards out there. Um, and like, but like the biggest issue is that like um, we're pretty lucky in New York City to have some data as we do. And so, uh, and just with the size of this gig, like able to have um, you know, as many members who are interested in this kind of thing. A lot of the other cities that make their like challenges are a little bit different. And so definitely by our NYCDB tool to be adapted into so kind of a case where there's there's a of their kind of like public booty link to it and bring in uh kind of dot ties which would end like trip fleetings and that. But uh a few other spaces is there's like a kind of like this collective of groups uh, associated to like a two east or kind of like Mackey's land or portfolios in a bunch of different cities of these are um and there's like a dozen or more groups kind of across what very good them looking at that and kind of like us all um uh, collective of folks just and like sharing knowledge around that and there's like lots of kind of like pockets of places where more of this work is going on um not like the tcc but like related uh but on this assuming their work which i think like some on slow loads and stuff uh, a part of it as well as some like local terms here city, but there are like a uh circuit wide freaking like, dot and the free search of the data because they're like starting to with us. So not to try to connect with us, but there definitely like are a lot of pockets of folks doing similar work. Uh as a piece like the group like but uh, kind of like continue to make or measures with um a bit cheaper the versions of whatnot, but uh not quite so much of the comic field. Yeah. 
But also the intervention mapping project shown in the Bay Area, um, which is a, the exact same thing as the HTC, um, but is on like very awesome points of uh, all work that a lot of. Um, yeah, just different types of different more like uh, all the other like story based mapping. Um, uh, so I feel like the nature of the products is a little different, but a lot of the mission overlaps. Uh, and they had started, they have a chapter in New York City now, uh, and I think LA as well. But yeah, I just that there's like other related stuff coming exactly like these. You see that at job. Curious about like success stories with partner organizations that have played be really good use. You're doing that to like, got uh, drive many of the outcomes to prepare a plan to or tempens. You can for us. I think that that's, that's something that we have to work on because uh, the vet like pick to make what they do uh, put it on, on a lot of water bar stuff that shows people what the impact that we're doing. Uh, but yeah, I think like, the, the work that we're doing with all the campaigns for the right council, uh, uh, the enabling campaigns that we can run like, and head to the EFF, that's what I think on. Yeah, I can talk about a couple of examples. So like there's the, um, data, I don't know exactly what to pop. Now like, with NYCDB, which now has the, um, not, uh, individually, it has the zip code level housing work data. It's got like all kinds of information about all cases of why your address work, but without individual addresses, because that's anonymized, but you can still underbeat it and do all kinds of in-depth analysis, even with the public data. And so our organization has collaborated on building out, um, with live updating charts, interact somewhat interactive charts of that data over time. So we have like active eviction pieces throughout the pandemic and that I don't want to write to council, but say to advocate for um, the extension of eviction protections or the type of it on the laws that like saved off evictions just the big cover. So that coalition was integral in all of those like eviction moratoriums that were entirely moratoriums during the pandemic. Um, so a lot of times they've been like, okay, like we know this is happening, we're on the ground, we see it, but we need these, we need the aggregate data, we need the statistics to be able to like make our piece in public. So we've been able to do that with the helping work data. Uh, and then I think with individual tools, like, uh, I don't know, I don't know how many total users, wow, Tools what has, I'm sure it's a ton, um, anecdotally, like a lot of you in the room have used Tools what, um, and it's incredibly we kind of really like use a useful tool for to mix with the network vendors, <laughs> understand landlords and the basis of um, organizing the lanes against the liberal landlords. Uh, and then that portal uh, has like over 2,000 users a year. And then I think that like we really hear of the impact anecdotally, that is, you can look at like your analytics app support, but um, when you hear that a person is like using your tool to build a legal piece and went a legal piece and say, the theory. Do you have any, do you want to add a bit? Like lots of other, I'll like quantified results and stuff. Um, and then that's not this chair, that's doing the fishing detour, what to do is like kind of funded it or down at the, but there's like a ton of like small piece uses of it over time. And so make it simple, it's just like, um, spinning up like simple maps for and like arcade buildings for fair reach for for kind of just thinking about like um this uh the, like all the work that it just does like makes possible and like uh we wouldn't necessarily know like all the cases uh that um uh, it's used for but there's a, like a ton of that kind of like small level uh work that like before just like would be possible to skip into the amount of like upfront work to to get to the point where you're able to do that and now it likes uh, things like that and and then after doing it he found um, totally easy and that happens all the time um i feel like there's like, a lot of like that and out of levels also and then on top of just like questions that people ask us that we can uh quickly answer because of the infrastructure of this like there's um like a couple of us that simply um had a while ago it was like big we're specifically interested in kind of um, risk of fire from pulpy electrical wiring um, in like uptown that have so like super specific and whatever, but like easy, easily able to does it follow there because like we get a query of like we're all the buildings at a certain side and in the last however long the pad of the coin about 
all the electrical wiring and uh, like these other categories and then they just like quickly were able to spit out a list of like your like your buildings that you can like sort them by and number of degrees and like to serve like fucking controls about and like it's like those and other quick things that um <coughs> like say organizers at that sort of time were just like help direct their efforts in a way that uh kept a little bit more effective and uh so there's like tons of books with small ones that are as possible at a time Uh, I think, um, well, all those can say, like, uh, it's a great group. Like, I've been late upon her. Um, I uh, joined, like, a, a few years going this, though. Like, and um, it's just a great, like, it's so, it's such a, like, supportive network of people who all kind of have, like, this very niche interest in housing data. And, like, I would agree that, like, um, it really doesn't matter, like, where you like how your expertise level is because like some people are more like policy focused and some people are for data side focused but like if you just have the interest it like works and you intend to like find your space in the 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 uh, cult of shit and like um i it's been helpful for me because it's it's helped just like push me to do my own like research projects for for like various hobby projects or to help with if there is an ask that comes through the coalition that and it's a great way, like, like I, I built like a few maps on like vacancy or affordability, and it's also a great place. Like, there's presentations during the coalition where people could just come and just show that they're working on, and people will give like really great, really like specific feedback because they know where it's coming out. So it's like a really great place to balance up a bite is as well. Yeah, and it was just it's it's very just like flow states to the place. And it's like really welcoming. Yeah, so highly recommended. Well, I like I'm when I was like, kind of that just remember years ago, Kyle, like, oh, another thing I knew present as well as like these, I took them over really people want to show people something we did that get feedback on it. And he mulled up this like super amazing interactive map that came out of nowhere and like accomplished a whole bunch of things. And I'm like, where have you been? Like, <laughs> it's really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I guess it was kind of part of like you practicing skills of trying to like go around and understand something. But I think, you know, even like some people work fun projects, but are side projects and like we turn into something they or maybe not, but it's a space where you can like get that feedback. Others, it's sometimes people come in with projects and we'll be like, oh, this is like really close to something else that somebody else wants to make happen. And because for a network, we know about the right person to connect with. Um, so I think that type of like knowledge sharing and information with sharing would be very recall. Um, I was curious, like, kind of average is hard for it, but like, how do you present your data to like all of this mentioned? Like, those will very deep, like, radicalize for people to like create through the ballot to work on the correction after it falls. And but, but, um, so I don't know how do you like then, or do you at or do you work with trial as the half of the book you're like I'm in charge to your question uh, if we kept this bad that much and like as a organization I think a lot of the way that we, you as a coalition kind of like shows up behind the scenes and work with the other folks to do it whether that's like simple the building I don't that's uh, the MSR or like in uh bring out of day jobs or um, yeah, some of them come in touch stories, um, journalist has a, like, what could be done network is if each have asking about data, different co-op of bird fish, like, as a for video, then meet that, but, uh, the means, yeah, and so, like, a bunch of people are calling that, like, our, or for a member of the HDs, um, with, like, outlets at City of Chicago, how does, like, what's going on in the same plot? Um, which should like the thing check out on the like reporting, but um, there's a ton of both and a lot of the um, rent stabilization data that the HCC and like the verbal position get there. But uh, uh, yeah, to probably two, 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 sure. But that's uh, basically like this, like the number of years should be done. Like we're trumped in seven. I mean, at least this is a well played easy good database and the most best skills, but the coach. How would where was her parents and going to like a chicken there? I thought people like to ask go through well the theater is available. Uh on the so go up at the Charbies and to tell them to this did has go. <coughs> yeah, I would say that it's 
uh, maybe for at least two reasons, like um, publishing, like publishing, I'm doing the work that gets done, um, kind of like under a clip in the Harvard Data Coalition, like it ends up being like just fix will collaborate with press on publishing a new report or NHB will collaborate with the press on a new report, you know, like for the um, most recent tracker we built for the right to conflict level the poll, which shows the share of Ted Edsgrew over the other of Richie Pace, is Sam, who my told just remembered that he wrote a story and it got picked up and got a lot of press. And so it's kind of like the more bullet basing projects that NYCDV end up getting like taken up by the digital organizations that are involved. And so any publicizing that happens do not be this like the organization has an infrastructure and big communications where uh, having data coalition, we don't have a structure to like really handle press or work with it. It can be like a couple of data kind of things to manage. Uh, so I think that sort of by nature and because like uh, HGC can be like the back end and the infrastructure and then the publication projects end up being more uh, happens with individual organizations, thus where the public communication top of the transition. But also there's a lot of word about people on the website and reporters do like put a request in the depth. So it's like more than two spots, probably they do some bit to grab like what to say when we just still tap like a spokesperson or policy. Listen, it while super we we figure it out, we tech manage it, but it's not always the best. I think that's a good way to end their talk. Yeah, uh, but yeah, we definitely deal with tough off the targets. Uh, with with recruiters, uh, you know, just to kind of figure out amongst ourselves to see where we want to kind of, or here we want to enact the request of how to sit back and have the to do with it. So, I think that's good note that, uh, um, yeah, I think the funds are nice, what we see for companies to talk us mm -hmm. and ask them. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.